have to read the presentations as they come up in the proceedings. Um, so today I'm going to, to, to pursue a little invention that, that happened three years ago and uh, talk about its extension into the uh, in, in the domain of uh, knots. And uh, I suppose 10 years ago, when I first came to our campus, um, to the 2005 meeting, uh, um, meeting everybody, I thought the last, last thing in the world I'd uh, end up doing is doing a presentation on knots. But, uh, Here we so, are. Um, <laughs> so, what I'd like to do is to um, introduce this concept of uh, bi-entropy, um, which is my, word, my way of talking about order and disorder in a binary string. So, okay, so I, I want to talk about order and disorder, and I, I was listening to um, Steve in the previous presentation uh, talking about uh, entropy, order, and disorder. Uh, so, there's a, some quite strong relation to what's been mentioned already this morning. Uh, there's a, a, a long history. Um, about the measurement of order and disorder. Uh, Obviously, it's only with the water and the okay. injection. So, I'll, I'll talk about uh, the concept of bi-entropy, um, which is my convention. And um, during the course of the review process for my bench, with not bi-entropy paper, uh, John Anderson um, basically forced me to uh, uh, rewrite it um, uh, to. In, in, Introduce the concept of, a, of, of the entropy of hoops. Uh, John Anderson and Keith Bowden did a joint paper on bit hoops um, half a dozen years ago. And uh, it, it's quite interesting that the concept of bit hoops are, are so relevant to what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, when I developed by entropy, I um, tested it out in four, four or five areas including prime number theory, which is quite interesting. Uh, but since then, there's half, half, about five different groups of people around the planet that have been applying it in a number of different fields, uh, which is quite interesting. Okay, so having introduced by entropy, uh, I'd like them to go and talk about its application in, uh, uh, in, in the space, in the area of knots. I'll show what we've got to do to a knot to turn the knot into binary form how we do that, uh, how we compute the bi-entropy of a knot, and um, what results uh, we got out of that process. We've got some binary strings, some binary strings, uh, all the ones, you know, we understand that as a perfectly ordered string, all the zeros, perfectly ordered. Um, down, down here, um, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, it's regular, it's not disordered. Um, and it's in fact what is known as a periodic string. Um, here uh, we've got uh, a string that's 0, 1, 0, 1, uh, and then the digits reverse 1, 0, 1, 0. Oh, yes. So that's, you know, that's neither ordered nor disordered. Uh, so yeah, we've, 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 got some, we've got some intuitive understanding of what we feel about these, uh, these binary strings. Of course, binary strings can do of uh, arbitrary length, and uh, our, our objective is to develop a measure of order and disorder, and this has been done, uh, attempted many times. Uh, so, um, uh, Shannon, uh, in the 1948 paper, he came up with the concept of binary entropy, uh, log, uh, P log P, uh, P log to, log, log to base 2 of the variety. Um, as a measure of the entropy of a binary string. That's got called Marseille, Marseille and very many others um, who came up with a series of uh, tests to look at the order and disorder of a string by looking at patterns and runs and so on. Uh, about 20 years ago, Steve Pinkus came up with this concept of approximate entropy, um, which is now been cited about two and a half thousand times, uh, which is a, um, and it's used in Things like heart rate monitoring, particularly, seems to work particularly well. Uh, so there's a, um, a, a, a need to be able to measure order and disorder. Uh, another way of looking at this is in, through the work of uh, Moore and Chaitin. Uh, if you look at 
they, they assess order and disorder in terms of the size of the computer program that you need to reproduce the um, thing you're observing. Uh, so something that uh, is uh, highly disordered, um, the computer program to generate, generate it would be longer than that object. Um, and so um, here's, here's the channel entropy, um, which is the foundation stone of my, my bi-entropy. So HP is um, minus P log space, log space 2 of P, uh, minus 1 minus P log space 2 of 1 minus P. Uh, but the problem with Shannon's entropy um, is that it ignores any order of disorder in the string. So Shannon's entropy uh, gives the same number uh, for 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is a periodic string, uh, as for this number here, and the reason it gives the uh, same number is because there are four ones in this string, and there are also four ones in that string. Uh, so even though we can intuitively sense that those two strings uh, don't have the same level of order and disorder, um, Chan's entropy gives them the same order. And so um, what bi-entropy does is it seeks to um, compensate for that. And the way it does that is using the binary derivative. Uh, it's a very short, very beautiful paper by Merton Nathanson in 1971. It was his first postdoc paper uh, in a long mathematical career where he, he formally defines periodicity. Um, uh, he defines what periodic is. Um, so here, I think this, this, this number here is periodic with p equals 4. He took two repeats of a 4-bit string. Uh, here is a, a string is periodic with p equals 2. Uh, and periodic with p equals 1. And he comes with the concept of eventually periodic, uh, which is where the periodicity appears at the end of the string. Here and here. Um, and he deals, his mathematics deals with infinite strings. Um, uh, of course, um, yours truly uh, is dealing with um, finite length strings, uh, because we're working with data in a computer. Um, the eventually periodic um, uh, sh should really have a complement which is firstly periodic, and it doesn't, it doesn't in Nathanson's in in work, so there's a little bit of omission there. And there's also some weaknesses some, uh, with regard to strings that are um, either odd length or prime length. Um, so there are, mm. there's some, uh, I've discovered some weaknesses in my entropy which are to do with this issue, uh, which I'm presently working on. Now, a, a bit hoop is simply a, a string that goes around in a loop. So this, this string here could be a, a, a its beginning and its end joined, and it would be an 8-bit bit hoop, um, which is what John Anson and Keith Bowden's paper is all about. Um, so a bit hoop is, a, is an, infinite, an infinite string, because you can go around this infinitely many times. So something that uh, John Anson pointed out is that uh, uh, Nath Nathanson's mathematics uh, applies comprehensively uh, to the mathematics of, uh, of um, bit hoops, which is really very interesting. So um, the, period of, the periodicity in a string is discoverable by taking a, uh, the, binary, the binary derivatives. Um, you have to take all the binary derivatives. Uh, and so uh, what a binary derivative is, is it's, it's the exclusive or of the adjacent, of the adjacent bits. Uh, so uh, dk, uh, d for derivative, k for the kth derivative of the string s. So the first derivative of this string here is one 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 uh, because each uh, of digits uh, differs, uh, which gives us a one. And so the next, so the next uh, derivative of that string there. Uh, no, notice that whereas this string here is eight bits long, that string there is seven bits long. So the next, the next binary derivative would be a string of zero 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 zero. Uh, it's uh, uh, six zeros all in a row. So, so the sixth derivative of this string here is, uh, is 0, 1. 
a, a binary fluke derivative is the exclusive or of the, of the adjacent bits, including the first and the last. So a binary fluke derivative uh, is the same length uh, uh, as the original string. Uh, and of course, you can take infinitely many uh, hoop derivatives, uh, but it turns out it's only useful to take uh, uh, the first uh, s, where s is the uh, length of the string. Okay, so binary derivatives and binary hoop derivatives. Uh, so Nathanson charts out some interesting properties of binary derivatives, um, uh, which we uh, properties we use. Um, we, we ho hopefully work with, with finite strings, um, but the mathematics was developed with regard to infinite strings. So um, I'm sort of use, I'm, I'm using and adapting Nathanson's work. But these these are the pro properties of, uh, of binary derivatives. So the derivative of an infinite finite string is eventually periodic with period p, then the binary string is periodic with period p or two p. And, and so on. So these 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 properties are actually quite uh, quite useful. So to, if it wasn't periodic, you would still be in the soup, sort of. You would be looking for periodicity down in the derivatives. Uh, well, yeah, for, 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 yeah, for a so for a, fi uh, for a finite string, uh, uh, there, are, there, are, there are only a finite number of derivatives. Yeah. And as, you, as, right. you, as you chew down the derivatives, yeah. eventually yeah. you're, yeah. you're yeah. about. Um, and um, if the final derivative um, is um, uh, zero or one, the string is either period, periodic or not periodic. Um, but I've just checked the paper for the exact wording on that. Uh, on that. But, uh, and, and right, so, right, and of course with the finite string, mm -hmm. it, you really do need a definition of what you would mean by periodic. Uh, yeah, because I'm not. Uh, the, there's a, yeah, the, the, the mathematics in my paper is, is slightly weak because the definitions aren't as formal as you would have made them. Um, so, uh, so, um, so repeat the question. You need a definition. Well, I, mean, I think your finite string you can say exactly what you mean by periodic because you would have a least substring that uh, that was not periodic, not yeah. repeated, and then uh, it would be periodic if that was then repeated. Um, what I do, in, in my entropy paper, all I do is use the, 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 the S binary derivatives of a string of length S. Um, so, so I don't make any statements or... So you don't worry about locating, but I mean, the, 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 at first, if you weren't thinking about derivatives, you would say, oh, a, a string is periodic, a finite string is periodic if I could find a little piece it was definitely non-periodic in my estimation, and then the rest of the string was a repetition of that over mm -hmm. and over and over again. But then your, your derivatives will reveal something like that. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's right. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, I, I, I just use the binary derivatives as a, mm -hmm. as a you know, uh, I, I'm not, I'm, I haven't properly, fully charted out the, property, the mathematical properties of binary derivatives. So they have some charts out some interesting properties as well. There's a whole bunch of interesting properties of derivatives of finite strings and finite hoops, but I haven't discovered the properties. So there's, there's some work to do still. But uh, sorry, well, that helps. Okay, so um, so Chan's entry doesn't accommodate uh, periodicity, as I've already said. Binary derivatives detect period periodicity. Um, you might need, you will need to evaluate all the binary derivatives. Um, uh, um, yeah, in, in terms of uh, coming up with a number that defines whether something is ordered or disordered, uh, you might need to do different things with the, um, with the higher or lower derivatives. You need to take into account that strings are, can, binary strings can be of arbitrary length, so we need to make the thing work for, uh, um, so we can compare the relative order of disorder of short strings versus long strings. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, the bi-entropy um, is some function um, uh, so f of the Shannon derivatives, uh, of the Shannon entropies of the derivatives, which is what that's saying. 
So bioentropy is not one function, it's some function. Uh, there are many ways of doing it. So it's some function uh, of the uh, channel entropy of the uh, um, binary derivatives of the string S. Uh, so I, I use a, a weighted average. And the methods I've used um, is a, a, a polynomial weighting, an exponential weighting. Uh, you can weight the derivatives using sort of a linear method, or you could use unweighted derivatives. So I've called the functions by n or b n or Francais. I've called the exponential one trade b n. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, the, the, the lay b n, the linear derivatives, and no derivatives is, is tab <laughs> <laughs> uh, And so, um, uh, which gives us a, na a naming scheme. And it's, um, uh, but but there's, other, there's another interesting French connection which uh, I'll come to in a moment. And so, of course, we have the hoop bi-entropy, the hoop logarithmic bi-entropy, the hoop linear bi-entropy, and the hoop, and so on. So there's a little naming scheme there. Um, uh, so I'm just uh, about to start a full mathematical definition of uh, uh, bi-entropy, the polynomial polyno version. Okay, and so, uh, coming from the spreadsheet world, you know, I did all the early uh, playing around in Excel, uh, and it's very easy to do. So if we have a uh, if, we, if we have a binary string, uh, we, can count, we can count that there are three ones in the string. The length of the string is four. Uh, so it's the first p, one minus p, the first logarithm, the second logarithm, and the Shannon entropy of the, of, the, of the string, and then the Shannon entropy of the first derivative, Shannon entropy of the second derivative. And then we've got the weighting here and um, the bi-entropy. So bi-entropy varies between 0 and 1. A uh, perfectly ordered string, i, all zeros or all 1s, has a bi-entropy of 0. And uh, a, a disordered string uh, has a bi-entropy of uh, 0 0.9 uh, recurring. Uh, so that's a bi-entropy for the string. Uh, it's a naked string. It's very similar. Um, uh, this is the bi-entropy of an 8-bit hoop, uh, so you can see the string, um, all the derivatives are the same length, and you can see uh, how it, in this partially disordered string, the um, last derivative is relatively ordered, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, um, it, 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 in, in, in the morass of derivatives of a long string, um, bi-entropy seems to uh, pick out the relative order and disorder. Uh, so here's, the, uh, here's how it looks for all 256 8-bit strings, and you can see that it's fractal. Uh, uh, so about half of 8-bit strings are um, relatively Disordered. Uh, here, here, are the, here are the four bit strings. So uh, this by entropy here, 0 0.11, corresponds to the string 11110000. Uh, uh, this one here is the string, this string here. Uh, so you see the diagonal is where all the periodic strings lie, and they've got low by entropy. Uh, and then you've got stuff uh, off the diagonal which uh, relates to strings that have pure strange properties such as this one here where it goes 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. If you now look for the string which is the comp binary complement of that, 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, which is over there, uh, we can see that this is on one of the off diagonal uh, pieces. Uh, so it's in the middle somewhere. Okay. So I tested that by entropy out in um, five areas, in fact. I've, for I've forgotten the most important one, which is uh, uh, prime numbers. Um, but, uh, uh, the prime numbers, human vision, friend of the generation, cryptography, quantitative finance. Um, so I was able to, uh, able to find 
useful results in all these fields. Um, this, this one is particularly interesting to do. Uh, I call it human vision, but not really. I'm sure where it lies. Um, so, uh, you've all, I think we've all been in that era of um, dot matrix printers. Yeah? So, the 7x5 seven, seven dot matrix uh, printer. Uh, all, 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 all the characters are formed by a uh, uh, you know, 7 by 5 uh, matrix, okay? Uh, and so I created um, raster scans of the, um, so a left, right, left, left raster scan and an up down raster scan. So I ended up with 35 bit strings and I computed the bi-entropy of each. Uh, of the two scans, and what we found is that uh, uh, Bantry could discriminate between uh, different character forms quite clearly. So I calculated the Bantry of the ISO character set, the Bantry of the Braille character set. Um, I created a low entropy character set myself, and I created a high entropy character set myself. And I used a random number generator to randomly uh, create some characters. Uh, and I found that uh, all the biotropy uh, discriminated uh, between uh, all five character sets at quite a high level of significance, which is, of course, really interesting. And what's also particularly interesting, uh, I find exquisitely interesting is that the Braille character set is, is a, a, a low entropy character set. So when Louis Braille, who was obviously French, designed Braille, uh, it, it, it's, although he didn't design it as a low entropy character set, it has the property of being a low entropy, a low entropy character set. And so um, uh, in, in a lot of signage, so police, police signage, uh, one common UK police symbol is that symbol in blue and white. That's a low entropy character set. Uh, so, um, uh, I know Richard is talking about SETI later. So, if uh, someone's if we're looking at binary strings being hurled at us, then uh, uh, out, of all, out of all the 35 bit strings that want to hurl at us, um, some would be interesting in that uh, they would be uh, low entropy and the rest would be uh, uh, random. So in, in amongst all 35 bit string, there are a few that have the unique property of being low entropy. And, and that's, a, that's a universal property. Okay. Um, so random number generation. Um, that was also a successful application area. There's been a lot of work done um, in testing strings for randomness. Um, so I, I found the, uh, I got long million digit sequences of, of all these things. Champanan, you know what Champanan's number is? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all, all, all written out. And it, it's, it's a simple, very simple number, but it's, uh, it has the unique property of being the only normal number. Uh, as in, it's the only number that has a, a proven equality of all the digits, uh, which is uh, really, quite, uh, really quite interesting. Uh, did, did you try that on that prime coding number that we were discussing in the email? You know, oh, yeah, 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 one of the end uh, no, yeah, 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 if the prime, the prime constant. Uh, the yeah. funny enough, I hadn't. Um, I, but I should do, shouldn't I? That's, that's not, that's not, <laughs> thank you for that. I knew it's always, it's always worth while I come around. Some <laughs> people ask you really obvious questions. Yeah, no, I haven't done that. It's a really good one. Um, um, I? Yeah, 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 sorry. Yes, 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 I did. Um, yeah, I did, I did the empirical investigation of what's known as the prime constant. Um, so the prime, prime, the simple. So if you think of the, the, the natural number sequence, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, if you assign a 1 to every prime number and a 0 to every non-prime, that resulting binary number is obviously infinitely long. It's called, a prime, it's called a, the prime constant. Uh, 
and um, I examined that for using biometry and discovered that uh, uh, you know, primes are not periodic and I was actually able to prove oh, that they're not There's similar. another one, some of them must have thought of this. <laughs> Instead of listing all the numbers, you list the primes down, down the decimal sequence. Two, three, five, seven, eleven. Just the primes. Uh, and then the primes are down in a tachyonome way. And do that, that's another one we we'll want to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, this worked. And uh, I was able to compute the biotropy of all these uh, long digit sequence by examining uh, 32 bit binary chunks. Um, uh, did three experiments, uh, 1,000 32 bit binary chunks, 10,000 32 bit binary chunks, and 30,000 32 bit binary chunks. And was able to show that there were statistically significant differences between uh, the uh, different, uh, some of the different numbers. Um, uh, Pink, Pink has had used approximate entropy to show that there's a difference between square root of 2 and square root of 3, uh, whereas biotropy shows that there's no detective, detectable difference, uh, which is uh, interesting. Uh, this, number, this, this number round here, that's also particularly interesting because that was an electromechanically created number that was made by the Rand Corporation in about 1960. And um, you can see that that's, um, that has uh, uh, the properties of non-randomness, uh, but it's more ordered, um, which is uh, quite interesting. So that, that's how um, biometry converges for the, uh, na the natural numbers that I examined. And you can see that Chamberlain's number, uh, which is a smooth curly one at the top, that behaves quite, uh, that behaves quite differently. Um, so, so uh, since doing this paper three years ago, um, there have been five other citations of it uh, in basic cryptographic and random number generation areas. So about five teams have done some work using it and published their results. Um, so we come now to apply by entry to knots. Um, and I don't know why I decided to go and do the bi-entropy of knots, I just <laughs> did. It was, must have been all those knot presentations that I've seen during the years from uh, a, cer a certain young man in the audience. Um, and so I had to learn uh, as best I could uh, the, the nomenclature of knots and the previous work on the subject. So, you know, very briefly, um, uh, you have the, the unknot, um, which is not a knot. Uh, the trefoil knot, the simplest day we have knot. This is called 3 1. Uh, it's called 3 because it's got three crossings 1, 2, 3. And it's number 1 knot uh, that has three crossings. Um, but there is only one knot with three crossings. Um, this is the figure of a knot. It's got four crossings, so it's called 4 1. And there's only one of its kind, there's only one knot with four crossings, so that's called 4 1. But there are five knots, but there are two knots with five crossings, uh, five one and five two. There are three knots with six crossings, and uh, so there's a two, four, six, seven knots with seven crossings. Uh, this, this work, uh, perhaps a little tell us how old this sort of work is. And that, that's over 100 years, is it not? The classification of knots. Yeah, the, the classification not started in the 1800s yeah. at the behest of Lord Kelvin, who thought they were atoms as uh, vortices modeled by vortices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, and we, and so we got people to make not tables. Yeah, and, 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 and the, what, what I found out is that um, there were some mistakes made over the years in the classification of knots, and it's only relatively recently that um, uh, the Early mistakes have been by that. Was it 146? 10 146? Well, there was a famous pair that yeah, started by Perko in the 1970s. Yeah. Two knots that were on the tables, but they were they looked different, but they were actually the same. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, 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 on the pop, some of the simple classification and topological property of knots uh, 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 yeah. are probably still being worked through. Well, also because there are the ones that 
you know, like obviously like the trefoil has a mirror. Not all of them have mirrors. Yeah, the, the original yeah. tables only showed the knots, not the mirrors. And, yeah. they, and didn't worry about the problem of is a knot equivalent to its mirror image or not. But the, the, the good exercise is 3 1 isn't, and that's our yeah. mm. And 4 1 is equivalent to its mirror image. Yeah. That might be wrong or not. That might be wrong or not. So, the paper, for someone, for someone who did not know anything about knots, <laughs> it was an interesting process learning the basic stuff. Um, and I went out to the plumbing shot, shop and um, made. Yeah, I, I wanted, because I wanted to compute the entropy of a knot, I knew how to turn it into binary, binary form. So I came up with, with the expression binary knot and started to Google binary knots but couldn't find anything. Mm. And eventually I, I, uh, I Googled cubic la knots on the cubic lattice and found you know, loads of stuff. Um, so the, um, I, I was rapidly able to. Uh, so there's a body of work about encoding knots in binary. And uh, uh, they basically look like that. Uh, uh, so I made that out of a domestic heating pipe, um, soldered together on the uh, kitchen gas stove. Uh, <laughs> one evening. Well done. <laughs> as, as you do. Experiment <laughs> lived, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it was actually quite hard to make. Um, it's, it's, got a, it's, got, it's got a three way symmetry. If you look carefully at it, it's, it's essentially three planes that uh, mm. three planes that intersect in the XYZ plane. Each, uh, um, they don't become, there's a point that they become feeling and absolutely yeah. not, not allowed to bring it because they are on the, in the lounge, these, these two items. Uh, this is the figure of A knot, they're, they're, they're on the table in the lounge, and I was not allowed to bring the furniture <laughs> to Amber. <laughs> so I thought, like, I thought like, if you're Scotland, I might actually make, make one, <laughs> which, which, which would take a few hours and cost a few, you know, 20 or 30 quid, but it would be quite, quite fun to do and leave, and leave it with John. Oh, lovely, yeah. Or make soup. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so yeah. basically, um, the cubic lattice, um, it's Z3 in mathematical terms. Matrix of dots in three dimensions separated by unit distances. Um, basically, the idea is join the dots to create a knot um, or a topological form in that space. Um, so it's relatively recently proven that you require 24 steps to make a uh, trefoil, uh, 30 steps to make a uh, figure of eight, and 34 steps to make five one. There's no extant proof uh, of what the minimum number of steps it, it takes to make 5-2 in the um, cubic lattice space. Uh, so you have to do things heuristically. Um, steps are the unit distances that you're getting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so um, if, if you had some, um, if, if you had some kiddies bricks, square blocks, you'd need 24 blocks and some glue to make the trap oil. You'd need 30 blocks to make, and so on. So, um, um, so, so minimum number of steps for the rest are obtained heuristically, and there's a, a, a really fabulously useful paper by Shirai, um which is available freely online, just to look carefully on the search case. Um, they computed the um, uh, minimum forms of knots um, up to uh, including uh, 10, 165, so that's uh, knots up to including 10 crossings. Um, and there are 165 uh, different forms of the uh, um, um, not sort of 10 crossings. Uh, Shireen, um knew, of course, that um, due to rotation, uh, double transformations, a lot, a lot of um, knots uh, in the cubic lattice space are equivalent, and so they used an awful lot of compute power to. Um, condense um, the knots in the lattice space uh, into just um, a single extant example, one of each form. Uh, so they created, um, they, to, to communicate the form of the knots, they used a single use of the encoding. It's simply 
stands for north, east, east, west, south, up and down. So the trefoil lot, uh, oh, sorry, the trefoil lot in New Southern Coding is, is that, down, 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 east, east. Um, and if you go back to here, um, you can actually follow the New Southern Coding around the, uh, ar around the knot. Okay, so it's, uh, um, so Shireen uh, and his team supply a new sort of form, um, 75 conical forms of the trefoil knot, um, all 24 steps long, all different, um, and um, a, a new sort of example of each of the uh, more complex knots. Um, so there are 249 of those. And so those 75 new sort of buildings of the trefoil lot and the 249 encoding, new sort of encodings of the uh, other knots it is the raw data of my, my entry study. And so, of course, uh, it's easy to convert new sort of into binary because you just use an eight, uh, <coughs> a three bit encoding. So, north might be 0, 0, 0, east might be 0, 0, 1, west might be 0, 1, 0, and so on. It's, it's trivial to convert. Um, new sort into binary, um, and that's that's what I did. Um, but it's slightly more complicated than that uh, because, um, of course, there's a choice as to whether you encode north as zero 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 or you encode north as one zero one, and that has implications in terms of the order of disorder or by entropy of these uh, resulting strings. And of course, you might want to encode new sub in 8 bits um, and so here, here here's the other knot uh, down east up west um, encoded firstly using a, um, an encoding that would give the impression that DEUW was an ordered number whereas here I've coded it differently so it's um, a more disordered uh, uh, knot and so you have to use Monte Carlo methods to average out the effect of uh, using lots of encodings to discover the average properties of the encoded binary knots. And after much fiddling around, I um, decided to um, just use that uh, make this encoding. Uh, I used you know, three, four, five, six, um, but several of eight, eight um, for reasons I won't bore you with. But, uh, um, so, um, I needed to create, um, uh, but it, it, so you have to remember, um, I hadn't done this experiment at all. Uh, this, this is new work, and so I had no idea about the properties of this mathematical space. And so, um, I decided to, um, once I'd set all the coding and got some idea of what was going on, uh, I decided to um, create two sets of encodings. So here, um, in row one, I've decided to code N as the binary equivalent of 44, east is 82, west 201, south 21. So that's one encoding. Here's another encoding. Here's another encoding. So uh, each, 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 of these, each of these four encodings would, would express the dual knot D, E, U, W in a, in a different uh, um, 4832-bit form. Okay, so um, is that reasonably clear what we're doing here? Quick question: Why isn't an uncoding north, south, east, west? Uh, it could be. It could be. Uh, so that's that's what Shrine. Uh, uh, that's that's Price and Walker D U W. It's on the same form. So uh, D U W is like that. But we could also do the un knot like that. Or we could do the un knot like that. And so what Shirane et al. do is they reduce all those obvious transformations to one example. Um, uh, so, so rather than having um, a, a long table of, of knots, um, they eliminate the isomorphisms. Okay. 
Yeah, sorry. No, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've lost where you got these numbers from now. Uh, I, was, I was back. Oh, uh, these are just random numbers. These are, these are sets of random numbers. Um, I'm, I'm ran randomly choosing numbers between uh, 0 and 255 uh, to be members of this. Uh, cause I, um, because there are 512 possibilities. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. Um, if I, if, I, if I encode, I can encode north as 0, south as 1, up as 2, yeah. that, that would be naive. Oh, so so right. I've, chosen, um, I've chosen 6 numbers out of, two, out of 256, okay. and then I've chosen another 6 numbers out of 256. Okay. And so there's 256, so the 256 factorial divided by 252 factorial uh, possible ways of constructing uh, encoding A, okay. uh, and so which is uh, a number of, of the order of two, two times ten to the fourteen. So these uh, the, the probability that encoding A and encode, encoding B are the same uh, is two, uh, one in ten to the fourteen. Uh, so um, using these two encodings, I. Uh, um, I did some computations. So for each of the 75 chronicle forms of trefoil, and for each of the 244, 49 minimal not end examples, for each encoding and encoding A, for each encoding and encoding B, for each of two sets of random randomized controls, I created a binary number representing each knot, and each uh, uh, each knot would be a, a binary number ranging in size from 192 bits up to 105, 112 bits. So these, these, these binary numbers are actually quite large numbers. Uh, the 512 num bit number is, is a, a big number, uh, particularly in terms of the size of the universe. Yeah? Uh, so I then computed the logarithmic hoop by entropy uh, of each of these numbers. And it took a while, and I had to be very careful that I didn't make any mistakes, and it was a little bit anxious at times. But the first results I got, um, which were most quite profound, it looked very simple, but basically all the, all the numbers in encoding B are different, and, and, and encoding A are completely different. It's all drawn from this enormously 10 to the 14 space, and I get the same number. Um, so the, uh, so, on average, uh, when I encode knots um, using two entirely different encoding methods, I get the same results, which is incredibly important. And the same occurred for the, so the, this occurred again for the trefoils and for the, all the other knots. Um, so, the Monte Carlo method is stable. And also, what it shows. Uh, it is that uh, knots are disordered, um, so a number that's close to one uh, is a, a disordered binary object, according to my binary met metric. Uh, the, so the binary of the trapper of knots, um, so the, the, the least disordered of the trapper of knots is the knot 250, right? Now, what do you suppose the knot 250 looks like? It looks like that, the one I'd made three months prior. How's about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, it's a cool. normal one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, the, the one that I made using yeah. my own hands. No. Because that number, the one that you made, is in fact the model of the minimum. Yeah. 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 But, I, but I hadn't done the experiment. Because when I made that, oh. you know, it was my way of trying to get my head round. Yeah. yeah. Not all these knots. And it turned out that the one I made was the uh, minimal form. Ten minutes. Hmm? Oh, thank you. Ten minutes. Nearly finished. Well, oh, can, can I just point out that, that Mike Manthe couldn't come, but he sent a message saying, may the spirit of entanglement be with you. <laughs> <laughs> we had proofs of this earlier, but here's another one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, so um, uh, here's, the group, here's the group um, performance of the uh, all not. We recall that there's only one version of the uh, trefoil, two versions of uh, one version of the figure of eight, two versions of five crossings, a handful for six and seven, but eight, nine, and ten. Uh, there are many variations of, of these knots. And you can see that there's a, a broadly increasing uh, biotropy of the uh, knots with increasing numbers of crossings. But four is. But, yeah, but there's, only, there's only one version of four. Right. There's only one knot with four crossings, and there's only one with three crossings. But the uh, biotropy <coughs> of four is less than three, is that to do with it being. It, 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 it's just a, um, an artifact. Whereas, whereas the, 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 these three are statistic averages. Um, and um, it, since it takes a different number of characters to represent uh, the more complex knots, I mean, so, sometimes you can do a, a knot of 10 crossings and 48 characters, sometimes it takes 64 characters to do a knot with 8 crossings. And so, but again, you can see that as the uh, Encode, uh, as, as the new state encoding length increases, so does the uh, um, biotropy. Well, of course, that's a, that's a, a result which we really intuitively expect. Now, uh, knots, uh, knots of higher numbers of crossings are divided into two, class, into two classes, the alternating and the non-alternating knots. And so you can see that biotropy clearly and statistically discriminates between the uh, knots in the two classes, uh, which to my mind is an explicitly important result. Uh, so we've used my entropy to show that the pattern of the prime numbers is not periodic. So my discovers a use of, discovers a well-known property of the prime constant, and my entropy also discovers a previously unknown property of the alternating and non-alternating knots mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of nine crossings mm -hmm. and ten crossings, but the statistical difference between those two artifacts is, is huge, mm -hmm. uh, and so we can be reasonably confident, but not certain, that uh, that property will uh, persist through uh, uh, knots of higher things or crossings. The interesting thing about that is that you're looking at these guys in space, Mm -hmm. And um, in space, you can't even quite tell whether it's alternating or not. You really you have to have the flat diagram. And look oh, well, and yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah. With here you can use entropy as a yeah as a prediction. Now, now recently there was a result, and I'll show you the paper. I haven't read it yet. Of somebody who characterized what not alternating means in terms of surfaces that bound the knot, surfaces right. that bound the knot, whose boundary is the knot. Have certain properties, but only if it's alternating. Yep. And that's a spatial discrimination for what alternating means. Uh -huh. uh, and it might be related to what's happening here. Yeah. Because yeah. you're working in space. You know, yeah, and I don't know. Don't, 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 don't forget all my entropy is just some, some function of the binary derivatives. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so the, but the code you use is a code that describes how the knot is in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, what implications? So, so, summarizing the results, I've got uh, all knots can be converted to binary form. Um, a measure of the order disorder uh, by entropy can be computed, so nobody's ever, tr no, nobody's ever quantitatively computed uh, um, entropy from the physical form of a knot before. Um, unless someone does it otherwise. Uh, Knots vary in their degree of order and disorder. Uh, knots are, in fact, not out the word generally, knots are highly disordered uh, binary objects. Um, alternating and non-alternating knots have differing degrees of disorder, and more complex knots are more disordered. Thank you. Five minutes for questions. We've got a one minute comment one of the things that's a really hard problem in general enough here is finding the least number of whatever ways in which you're going to make, like in your case, cubic lattice. Yeah. What's the least number of struts in the cubic lattice in the yeah. or not? 
in general, nobody has any formulas or anything for that. Um, and similarly, if you take a knot and make it out of rope, what's the least length of rope you need in order to make the knot for a given diameter? Yep. And that's also pretty hard. I don't know. And then an intermediate discrete problem is, suppose you had a string of beads, yep. right? Not at the beads, and you tie a knot in a string of beads, use the least number of beads you can with some criterion for what you mean by least. Yeah. And again, uh, there's the least number of beads for that knot. Um, um, and that again is unknown. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the question, I'm wondering whether maybe with this kind of discretization there's a way of getting a, a sequence out of it that would be um, susceptible to an entropy measurement. But I'm not sure what it would be uh, because it's beads and it's really in three space, but it isn't um, it's so a, easily specified as go north, go south, go east, go west. It's a discrete space, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but this, this work is not the cubic lattice space, but there are at least two other forms of uh, space that uh, this sort of work is, is done in, but I just confine my work to cubic lattice. Um, so, another point, of course, uh, when I was talking about uh, um, SETI, So, uh, if someone's shoot, shooting binary numbers at us, uh, binary sequences at us, uh, in the 35 bit sequences, these would stick out as being, uh, well, uh, and these would stick out as being of particular interest because they're of low entropy and these are of high entropy. Uh, if, if someone's shooting 512 bit binary numbers at us, uh, some of those 512 bit binary numbers are going to be knots, and some of them are not going to be knots. And so, um, the, 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 these binary knots have a universal or universality about them, which may or may not be interesting. Here's another sequence for a certain exam. It's called the Gauss code for the knot. You may know about it. You know, you the Gauss know Gauss. This is for a flat diagram of the knot. And suppose you have a drawing of the stuff on the knot. Yeah. Then it's, and you label the crossings one, two, and three. Then you walk the line and you go over one, under two, over three, under one, over two, okay. under three. And you get a sequence of, 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 the, of, the, of these symbols, one, two, three, okay. the repetitions. It's called um, a C code, isn't it? Uh, uh, a C code? Well, uh, That's called a uh, gas code. Gas, gas code, yeah. Now, the, the point being that um, if you have a large amount, then you will get a sequence of symbols, one through n, already each one repeated twice. Yep. But the way in which they recur yep. is really quite complicated. And so if you made a little binary sequence for each one of them, yep. uh, and then uh, examine the entropy for that, yep. it would be very interesting. I'm yep. sure it would be yeah. something. I thought of doing that, but I, th I think I came to the conclusion that those codes are a permutation and so I'd get a, a null result when I did the Monte Carlo um, because I just have all the same numbers but in a different order and my brain said to me that that's probably not going to... Yeah, it's true, it's like looking at a permutation. Yeah, yeah, so... A, a kind of complicated double permutation. Yeah, and, yeah it, it, so yeah, I think that's a point, useful point. And Punctuated by the overs and unders because otherwise you haven't got enough. That's, that's right. And though, if one is able to do that, those results should, those entropy results of that encoding should correlate strongly with the entropy results of this encoding. If, well, that's another question, because these are flattened out versions, and there's a minimal notion of doing it. Yeah. Getting least graph in the plane. Getting least graph in the plane is far away from getting the least uh, thing in space. In 3D space, yeah. Like, like who would. Who would have imagined that if you made at least uh, kind of like this is the beaded version, this is the figure eight kind, yeah. um, that it turns into a tetrahedron, which it does. It's a nice tetrahedron in yeah. space. There's all kinds of things that happen in space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, any other questions? Um, fascinating stuff. The memory is also useful because um, in, in, in engineering you're very often trying to determine signal in the presence of noise. Entropy of jet engines. And you don't, this is often done fairly crudely by filters and bandwidths and that kind of thing. 
But at least this seems to me to be a little bit of a the content of randomness can be recognized and thereby improved. Or alternatively, our insecurity work, for example, if you're designing an automated teller machine, yeah. you might decide that you want to derive a secret number from by processing the account number, in which case you might use some kind of feedback shift register technique. Or it'd be done, some of those already been done using my work. That's one of the citations. Already been done. Are you not getting any? No, no, it's already been done. Or are you very interested in your understanding? Bioentropy of configurations of DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's got two and a half thousand citations to his work. So I could take a bit to be more of a century. So, but thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, are we going to show a film halfway through lunchtime or something? Uh, can you want to show the film for lunchtime? Yeah, we were talking about doing it like at yeah. 1.30ish, like 54 or Sure, let's do it again.